So let's pick up where we left off then. Uh, we're going to move on to modeling the hand. Now, as I mentioned previously, I am crap at modeling hands. I mean, I can do it, but it takes me a long time. Um, there's a much easier way to do it, and that's what I'm going to show you now. So let's go to a website called rtech3d.com, or any website you want. Basically, find yourself a hand, a 3D scan of a hand, and download it. Just make sure the license allows you to do with the file what you need to be able to do with the file. For example, this one is Creative Commons. Uh, once you've downloaded it, go into Blender, and we'll just do File, Import, whatever format it is when you download it. You've got a few different options. Let me bring that in. And then we'll scale that down until it's about the correct size. We'll put it into place as well. So R, Z, 90, R, X, uh, R, Y rather, 90, G, X, move it across. And uh, get the hand whatever size you want. And just be careful that the thumb is pointing the right way. So for example, that is pointing the incorrect way. So I'm just going to S, Y, so it's on the Y axis only, negative 1. And that will flip it over. And then we'll scale it down a bit more until it looks about right. And don't worry, we're going to make this look robotic now. But the first thing you need to do is Control A and apply the scale. Always apply the scale, otherwise things are going to go horribly wrong. And if you look as well, if we go into uh, face orientation, you'll notice because I've scaled it on the negative one, it's actually inverted it, which is going to cause problems with uh, some of the modifiers we're going to use later, such as the solidify. So make sure we go into edit mode. We'll select all. We'll press F3 and we'll choose to flip the normals so it turns blue. And if we come closer, you'll see the resolution on this thing. It's very high poly and we don't want that. So all we'll do is remesh it. And again, I'm using the quad remesher. If you don't have it, then you can use in the data panel the quad remesher here. It's the same sort of thing um, as mentioned previously. So I'm going to remesh it with 5000. There we go. What I want to do is make it a bit more robotic looking. Um, so that's going to be a case of, let me just turn off this face orientation. I want to be able to put a, a bone structure inside of it, um, a visible sort of mechanism that we can see where the finger joints sort of bend. So I need to make a bit of a gap for each of those uh, joints. So let's do that by going into edit mode, face mode, pressing number three. We'll just select around the joint. So we've got probably here and here, X, F. We'll do the same on this joint, X, F. And then I'll keep doing the same for all the joints on the fingers. Now this one hasn't worked. So that's good. I wanted that to happen. I'll, I'll show you how we're going to do that in a second. Now this one then, that's problematic, we can either do it a bit higher up, even if we do it higher up, we're still going to get a problem. So let's go back into school mode, and we'll just do the same as we did previously. We'll manually cut that out. So we'll go into the lasso face set. We'll go over the top, make sure we're getting a, a view so that we can cut straight through. And I'm going to draw that on. And then we can just tidy that up with the paint one. And if we hold down control, maybe make it a bit smaller. Uh, hold down control on the grey part, we can paint over the yellow part with grey. Maybe about there. And if we hover over the yellow before we start painting with control hold down, then it will expand the yellow. What we'll do now, same as before, we'll hover over this and press H. Now what you'll notice is I forgot to use the mesh filter to smooth the edges of that face set. So if you want to do that, that's fine. I'm going to leave it as it is because it's going to give me an opportunity to show you another way to smooth the vertices later on. Edit mode, A, X, F, back out of edit mode, in sculpt mode, Alt, H, and you'll see we've got this result now. So let's just right click and shade smooth, make it look a bit nicer. And there we've got a, a robotic hand. Now at the moment, it looks a bit too masculine. This is a very female robot, as we can see there. Um, so we need to make the hand a little bit more feminine. We'll do it in edit mode. I'm going to select a vertex at the end of each finger. 
And all I'm going to do is make sure we've got the proportional editing turned on. Make sure it's not in connected only so it can flow th across the gaps. And we'll go into the top view. Orthographic, the graphic. And I'm just going to move these now to lengthen the fingers. And we can, we can make sure the fall off affects a bit more of the area. Just to make those fingers a little bit more feminine. And we'll probably want to scale them down a bit, a bit as well. Across the hand. And there we've got a bit more of a feminine looking hand. And we probably also want to tidy up the gap between these fingers so that they're a little bit more aligned. So we'll go back into edit mode. We'll select this loop here. And I want to change the orientation to view. Let's make sure we set connected only so that when we make a scale, it's only going to affect the connected object like we can see there. And I'm using the mouse wheel again to change the fall off. Let's have a look. So we probably want to S, Y, scale that. And if you get strange results, make sure your pivot point is set to median. And I'm scaling on the Y axis. And because I've chosen view, the Y axis is straight up. As you can see, wherever I rotate the viewport, the green Y axis will always be vertical in the center of the viewport. And we're just trying to get it so it's um, they're a bit more aligned, basically. the opposing loops. So I'm basically aligning the fingers with the view, selecting the two loops that I want to be aligned, and then I'm scaling them on the Y axis so they're close together, that will align them. And then I'm taking the, one of the loops and I'm sliding it back up by pressing G twice. And we can flip it, if we use the E, it will align it to either the bottom one, so this one here, or if I press F now, now, now I press E, I press F, it's going to align it to what it was originally. That's what I want. So about there, maybe I'll rotate it a little bit. And just keep doing that. Now I've made a bit of a mistake here. I forgot to use the mesh filter in sculpt mode before I cut away those faces where we've got this gap here which has left us with this really jagged border. So let me try and tidy that up. What we can do there, right click, and we'll just choose to smooth the vertices. Smooth vertices. And we move them back up to about here. Maybe expand the selection a little bit. And I'll smooth them again. That'll give us a nice sort of smooth finish around the edge there. Before I move on, I just want to make it a little bit more robotic. You see we've still got quite a bit of detail, such as the tendons. Now, you, obviously a robot's not going to have tendons, but you might, I mean, you could if you wanted to keep it like that. It's completely up to you, of course, but I'm going to probably make it a little bit more robotic. I'm going to go into the filter. And I'm going to change this to normal smooth. I think that's better. So that's making it a little bit less human, a bit more sort of smooth and mechanical. I can also use the smooth brush just to manually smooth out particular areas. Um, turn the strength right down, and then we can just smooth out those, those parts only. Probably do the same in this little area as well. And there we are. So we've got a, a really good looking hand. And once we get the mechanical parts inside of those gaps, it's going to look really good. And I think we'll call that it for the hand. And then in the next video, we'll start working on the head.